Hey guys, this is Craig Migliaccio from AEC Service Tech, and today what we're going over are four checking the charge scenarios on this R410A air conditioning system. And the four scenarios are severely undercharged, undercharged, correct charged, and overcharged. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be adjusting the amount of refrigerant on the inside of this unit just so that you have the opportunity to check the charge in order to be able to tell if a system out in the field is undercharged or correct charged or overcharged. I already purged the air out of the hoses, so I did that right when I connected this system on while the system was still off. This unit has a piston metering device, and because of that, we're going to be using the total superheat method for checking the charge, which is the temperature on the large suction line minus the saturated temperature that we read by converting the pressure on this gauge set. So I'm going to take you step by step through this as we're measuring these refrigerant charges. If you don't know what type of metering device your system has, you're going to have to look at the indoor evaporator coil on the rating plate or right on the outside of the coil. You might see a nut and that would signify that you have a piston or you're going to have to just take that box cover off and see if you have a fixed orifice such as a piston or if you have a thermostatic expansion valve. If you do have a TXV, which is a thermostatic expansion valve, you're going to have to use the subcooling method. You're going to be using the temperature on the liquid line and measuring this red gauge and converting that to saturated temperature. But because we have a fixed orifice, we're going to be using the total superheat method in this video. This scenario is the severely undercharged scenario, and the way that you can tell right away, if you look at the pressure, which is around 100 PSIG, and you convert that to the saturated temperature on the pink inner ring, you can see that the saturated temperature is at or right below 32 degrees. So that, this right here is measuring the saturated temperature at the indoor evaporator coil. So if it's below 32 degrees, it's going to be freezing any humidity in the air crossing that indoor coil, and that's going to be a problem. Now, on our suction line, right here we have T2, and we're measuring right on our large suction line, which is also referred to as vapor line or the low side line. We read 74 degrees. So 74 minus, but we're right at 32 degrees right now, and that equals 42 degrees of superheat. Now this, this line temperature is the actual temperature that's in the house right now. It's not normally, because this temperature should be lower. But there's so little refrigerant heading into that evaporator coil that the air crossing the indoor coil has raised the temperature of the refrigerant exiting that coil all the way up to 74 degrees, which happens to be the temperature in the inside of the building right now. So that's why, that's how you can tell you are severely low. Your superheat is high, your vapor saturated temperature is low, and now we're gonna go ahead and check our subcooling. We check the saturated temperature right here, and we are reading 97 degrees right there as a saturated temperature on the pink inner ring, and then right here we have 94.3. So we have about two and a half degrees of subcooling, and we should have closer to 10 or 12 degrees of subcooling. So, subcooling's low, superheat's high, vapor saturated temperature is low, and also the temperature on the suction line is high. So that's how you can tell that you're very, very low on refrigerant. I also want to go over the target superheat that we should have for this system. So to do that, we're going to have to take an outdoor temperature reading, and we're going to take a wet bulb temperature measurement inside the building. So you see right on this picture right here in our refrigerant charging book, we have that available over at our website, but you see this picture right here, we're taking a dry bulb temperature outside and an indoor wet bulb temperature inside at the return, and we're gonna input those on our target superheat chart. Now we're at the indoor unit, and you see that we're reading our wet bulb temperature of 63.3 degrees in the return. So now that we have our wet bulb temperature of 63.3 degrees, we can just figure that's about 64, and our outdoor temperature is reading 87.8. So about 88 degrees. So it's somewhere between 85 and 90, and you see 64. So if we bring that down, we see that our target superheat right here is nine degrees. Now we could say that it's between 85 and 90 here, so we could shoot for a target superheat of 10 degrees. But we know that it's a lot higher than that, and that means that it's undercharged. A high superheat compared to your target superheat means that it's undercharged. What I did is I added about 12 ounces of refrigerant from our last step where we were severely undercharged until now. 
and I let the temperatures and pressure stabilize and we are reading a pressure of about 130 and if we bring that in to the pink inner ring you read a saturated temperature of about 45 degrees for R4 tonight in the middle of the evaporator coil. Now on this suction line right here we're reading 66 degrees. So you got 66 minus 45 and you're left with 21 degrees of total superheat. Now we still need to compare that against our target superheat. So you see right here our temperature outside right now which is called our outdoor ambient temp or our outdoor dry bulb temp is 89 degrees. So that's very close to 90 degrees. Let's go ahead and check the inside wet bulb temperature. We're at the indoor air handler right now and we're measuring the indoor wet bulb temperature and I just happened to change the tool just so you can see there's a variety of different psychrometers in which you can use. This one's a digital induct psychrometer and we're reading 63 degrees as a wet bulb temperature. Make sure to continue to check your indoor wet bulb temperature because that will lower as the system runs and in this case this is a wireless tool as well so if you have that hooked up to your wireless instruments you'll be able to read the indoor wet bulb temperature while you're outside. We're back out at the outdoor unit and you see our line temperature has fallen and our saturated temperature has fallen. So we have about 63 degrees as a line temp and our saturated temperature is about 44 degrees. So we actually have about a 19 degree superheat right now. So 19 degrees as a superheat, we need to know what our target superheat is and we measured 63 in the inside of the building for our wet bulb temperature. So it's between 62 and 64 and our outdoor temperature is very close to 90 degrees. So if we bring 90 over to where it intersects with 62, we see a target superheat of 5 degrees. And if you bring 90 over to 64, then you have a target of 9 degrees. So we're looking at a target superheat of about 7 degrees. You could also use this formula as well. So you can use that, or you could just use a, a chart like this, or you could use a digital calculation device. We also have one on our website. So we're still under charge right now. However, we're not in a danger of our evaporator coil freezing. Our delta T inside is still a little low, and we'll move on to our next scenario. This is our accurate charge scenario, and right now we have a vapor line temperature of 52 degrees. We take 52 minus 45, and we're left with 7 degrees of total superheat. So let's go ahead and check the indoor wet bulb temperature and see what that is right now, and we have an outdoor dry bulb temperature of 88 degrees. I'm back at the indoor air handler and we're reading a indoor wet bulb temperature of 61.7, 61.8 degrees. I also wanted to show you that you could check your indoor wet bulb temperature with a wet sock over a bead type temp sensor. So you could also use that in order to check your wet bulb temperature if you don't have a digital psychrometer. As you can see, our indoor heat load continues to lower and therefore our indoor wet bulb temperature continues to lower as the system runs. So it's crucial to always recheck your indoor wet bulb temperature. Now we're measuring our delta T, and T1 is in the return duct, and we're measuring 70 degrees. T2 is in the supply duct, and we're measuring 51 degrees. T1 minus T2, we have right about 19 degrees. So you're looking for right about 18 to 21 degree delta T. However, you may not get a delta T that high when you have humid air in the building. So if your wet bulb temperature is very high, you may have a slightly lower delta T and still have a correct refrigerant charge. But in this case, we have an accurate delta T because of an accurate refrigerant charge. I'm back at the outdoor unit and I'm reading a saturated temperature on the vapor line of 51 degrees minus 45. So that leaves us with 6.5 degrees of total superheat. We're going up a little bit, so 52 minus 45, so 7 degrees of total superheat. So, inside we measured 62 as our wet bulb temperature and right now, we have a temperature outside of 88 degrees. So let's just go with 90 for now and 62. Our target superheat is about five degrees. However, our outdoor temperature is about 88. So if we go up a little bit, we'll say it's six or seven degrees as our target superheat. So if your target superheat is seven degrees and you have a actual superheat of seven degrees and you're accurately charged, if you had nine degrees of superheat and your target was seven, you're still correctly charged because you're two degrees away from seven. So you're still correct. Now, however, I wouldn't tell you to set it at five degrees of superheat if your target was seven. You really want to stay away from anything lower than say five or six degrees of superheat on a running system because 
you're getting very, very close to not having a completely vapor refrigerant heading into that compressor. You're very close to having only saturated refrigerant entering into the vapor compressor, which could damage the, that unit. Now I'm gonna move on to our fourth and final scenario, the overcharge scenario. Here's our fourth scenario, and this is the overcharge scenario. We're reading 47 and a half degrees on our vapor line, and our saturated temperature at the evaporator coil is 46 degrees. So 47.5 minus 46, and we're left with one and a half degrees of total superheat. So that's no good, that's too low. We don't even have to go inside the building to check our target superheat, and we know that we're overcharged. And when you have a piston orifice like this, you always want to make sure to not overcharge it. At TXV, you could accidentally overcharge it and have even 20 degrees or 30 degrees of subcooling. In this case right now, we only have, uh, let's see here, 103 degrees saturated temperature minus 92. So we're, we have 11 degrees of subcooling. And that sounds about right, right? You know, normally it's around there. The problem is, we check the charge of a piston system with the total superheat method and we just don't have any superheat. So this can't control the superheat across the evaporator coil like a thermostatic expansion valve can. So we gotta make sure to recover the refrigerant out of this unit just a little bit. And you can do that while the system is running by taking our high side pressure and allowing our refrigerant to exit the unit and enter a recovery bottle. But that's only used to adjust the charge slightly because anytime you are decharging, basically you're, you're recovering refrigerant out of the system, while the system's running, you're gonna be removing oil from that system. So it's only used, you can only recover that way to do a slight amount of refrigerant. If you have to recover a lot of refrigerant, then you gotta make sure to turn the system off and use a recovery machine. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this system off now. If you want to learn more about how these systems work and how to prepare a system for refrigerant, check the charge, and to troubleshoot them, check out our book and full outline and sample pages over at acservicetech.com slash acbook. We also have our workbook available, and it's a thousand question workbook designed to test your knowledge, and it also comes with an answer key, so you can check it yourself. We also have quick reference polystyrene cards, so these can be used out in the field to check the charge and the troubleshoot systems. All of our physical products are available over at Amazon.com as well as at our website. We also have our ebook available at our website in English and in Spanish. So, so check that out as well as all the free resources that we have at the site such as the articles, the quick tips, the, the quizzes, the calculators, and the podcast. Hope you enjoyed yourself. We'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.